Rarely has a player come along who's intrigued me like Jaron Jackson Jr. He's the best defensive prospect since Anthony Davis, but he lacks the turnaround jumper of a traditional two-way big man. He fouls like the X button stuck on his controller, but he shot puts threes in like some oversized Kevin Martin. Oh, and he's only 19 and a half. To understand where Jaron's huge potential lies, we have to start with the promise of his game-changing defense. His reactions to threats are savant-like for a 19-year-old. Take this incredible play. Most defenders aren't thinking help yet, but Jackson drifts toward the ball side because the lethal James Harden approaches. Then he reads Harden's movement as James picks up his dribble, ready to challenge this lob, and he uses that crazy seven and a half foot wingspan to deflect the pass before Capella can handle it. These are rare, precocious plays that demonstrate remarkable awareness. Transition situations are faster and more fluid, but notice here how Jackson immediately identifies the ball. He covers ground quickly, and this is a layup with a lesser defender in his place. This particular play is a defensive clinic. First, he identifies the ball while feeling his own man, and he's ready to pounce if there's a breakdown on the ball. There is, he arrives early, and so Trey Burke opts for a floater, but Jaron hits a trampoline and swats it out of the air. Note how quick he is off the ground. There's no long load up or knee bend, and he attacks the ball close to the shooter. His feet are almost always in position to spring up. Look at how high he reaches here. This play reminds me of another Southpaw stopper who collected a few rings in his own time. And Jaron's combination of length and awareness can occasionally produce jaw-dropping saves. I mean, he makes this look easy, but he's essentially navigating a screen on a three on zero to chase down block a seven foot dunk machine. Also notice how he attacks the ball as early as possible, much like another all time great defender. This makes blocks less likely to make sports center, but they're incredibly effective nonetheless. Jaron's defense is still a little raw. Despite flashes of brilliance, it's almost like he doesn't have perfect control of his body yet. Particularly when he's tired, he's a little light on his feet, like he has his sea legs under him, and his momentum takes him just a bit too far here, and some of this leads to fouling issues. Notice how he reaches back as a reaction to over-pursuing. Jackson's near the bottom of the league in foul rate, committing a bloated five and a half fouls per 75 possessions. Experience and added strength likely fix this. Defensive Player of the Year's Draymond Green, Tyson Chandler, and Ron Artest all had comparable foul rates at the beginning of their careers. I view a lot of these off-balance plays as a lack of base strength. He has a high center of gravity that you can clearly see on a play like this, where it doesn't take much to topple him over. This isn't uncommon for teenagers who haven't developed that core, deep functional strength yet, who often hop around the court without being rooted to the floor. To compensate for this, Jaron leans on stronger opponents in the post, Note the angle of his body here, and while that works at times, it's also extremely vulnerable to spin moves or counters from sturdier opponents. And it can leave Jaron off balance. He still kind of looks like a boy amongst men at times, which is remarkable given how good he already is, and we haven't even touched on how comfortable he is on the perimeter, switching on to smaller players, which makes him immune to the mismatch hunting we see in today's game. Even against turbocharged point guards, he's long enough to overcome a speed gap, and he's mobile enough to stick to smalls when they attack him in the pick and roll. Again, he's able to slide his feet and then immediately leap into a contest. Very few players in the NBA have this combination of horizontal and vertical court coverage. His feet are always organized in position to either slide or jump. This horizontal game, if you will, raises his defensive ceiling even higher, as he's able to slide, switch, and recover with ease. This is probably my favorite Jackson defensive play of the year. He stays tight to Capella because of the lob threat, then scares Tucker off the line, recovers, and kills the entire thing. And because of all this, he's third in the league in adjusted field goal percentage against when he's the nearest defender on shots within six feet of the hoop, a whopping 12.5% below expected value. To 
put Jaron's defensive prowess into perspective, I looked at Jacob Goldstein's player impact metric and my own box score model since play-by-play -play was officially tracked in 1997. In that time, only eight big men have posted a plus 1.5 in defensive PIPM and a plus one in defensive BPM at 21 or younger. Most of these players turned into defensive monsters with Duncan, Howard, and Garnett sitting in the top 20 all-time in defensive player of the year shares. Of course, Jaron's on pace to join the club too. On offense, Jaron's more of a curiosity than a classic post player. His primary weapon looks like it will be bombing threes, and while his release is low and his form atypical, I'm not really concerned with either. First, he has a quick release that's still fairly high off the ground. Here, he comfortably flicks it over the long arms of Jared Allen. And second, all-time great shooters have mastered funky offhand action and knuckling rotation, and Jackson's jumper is soft and accurate. He's at 36% this year on nearly 153 point attempts, and that's comfortably above average for rookies of any size or any age. He's at 77% from the line too, another indicator that he can shoot. I'm particularly intrigued by his ability to shoot these as a step back three, or even on plays where he relocates to the three point line like a giant guard. From there, he sets up his driving game and he already has a nice handle for a big, which allows him to get places many big men can't. And that three point shot allows him to attack closeouts like this. He's deceptively quick and those giant giraffe steps eat up space. Almost all of Jackson's attacks head left but there's no reason he can't develop a right hand in time. He occasionally counters right and is already ambidextrous with his shot. In the post, he's no Akeem Olajuwon, but he does have a nice hook there. He's also great at picking on smaller players when they switch. He has a soft touch around the hoop too, and has a natural feel for these little flips and bankers. I also like how physical he'll get, throwing his hips into defenders to find better position. He's not a hugely explosive leaper, but he's quick enough off the ground to score over most players. It's certainly not the makeup of a classic all-star big man. For instance, his passing game is limited, but he's shown flashes of vision here and there, which might add value in the future if he can level up physically in the next few years. Remember how much lanky young bigs can fill out after coming into the league as teenagers. I doubt he'll ever be a great offensive centerpiece, but his defense already gives him a solid floor, and at 19, he grades out as a very good defender and solid overall player. Although his impact metrics were actually better earlier in the year, he seemed to hit a wall in January. Still, his ceiling fascinates me. He's already a decently efficient scorer because of strong shot selection, and almost certainly adds strength as he matures. It's unlikely that he'll ever be a classic post weapon, but a jump in physicality could add another layer, say, as a lob threat or even on the glass, and it could escalate his defense to world class, and if that happens, Jaron Jackson's a star player at worst, and perhaps, in a new groundbreaking way, he could even be something more. A huge thanks to all my new patrons and subscribers recently. I see you guys. Some of you have been incredibly generous and supportive, and you motivate me to crank out more content. Many of you have also inquired about Spotify. I'm working on getting the Thinking Basketball podcast on Spotify. In the meantime, I had former Spurs video coordinator Mo Dockheel on recently to break down Eastern Conference contenders. That's episode number 12. I'll leave a link in the description. Check that out if it sounds interesting. And as always, hope you guys are having a great day.